What's up, Browns fans? This is Gage from Houston, Texas, and you're listening to the Dogs Podcast. Let's kick this thing off. Go Browns! Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs if you'd like to get your intro on the show, head to thedogspodcast.com. Tap leave voice me on the drop down menu. Thanks to Gage for that awesome intro. He's one of our Patreon members. It's always nice to hear from one of those guys. Um, we have a bunch of stuff to get into today, but before we do, remember to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Make sure you tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official dog pack member on our Patreon page. Uh, like I said, Gage is a member on there. He's been a member for a while. We get to talk to him all the time. We're going to be setting up the fantasy leagues probably end of July. So if you want to play fantasy football with us, jump in there, I'd say, before July 31st, because first week of August, we're going to have to start organizing the league, seeing who's all going to play, how many leagues we're going to have, that kind of thing. So you got about 10, 11 days. So if you're interested in fantasy football and you want to play with us, you got about 10 or 11 days to jump into the Patreon. You get an extra episode every week. You get threads pretty much you know daily, or at least as often as I can remember. Uh, music Mondays or Tuesdays, depending on when Kenny Mack reminds me. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Uh, fans from all over the world, from Canada to Scotland to California. So if that's kind of what you're into and you want to meet Browns fans from all over the world, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So we kind of have a, a hodgepodge kind of episode today because not a ton going on. So it's just kind of like, hey, let's just find a bunch of random stuff to talk about. I guess the biggest news this week, Browns related, is probably it came out the other day that Deshaun and the NFLPA plan to sue the NFL if the NFL tries to suspend them for a year. So I guess a lot of people have thoughts on this. What do you guys think it means? I've seen this must mean that the Watson camp is nervous that they're getting this year's suspension. That's not what I think. What do you guys think? We kind of talked about it earlier in the week, and I really do. When I first read this, my impression was they're they're kind of daring the NFL. Go ahead and do yeah. this. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Is that kind of what it's you guys thought fl- too? It's flex move. To, to yeah. me, yeah. it yeah. was they must get the sense it's not going to be a full season, but it's not going to be zero. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so, which means it's going to be in the NFL's hands. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Because people are still commenting that the NFL can do whatever they want. If it's not zero games, then yes, it's in the NFL's hands. And they're saying, listen, you better stick with what this judge gives or we're going to try to sue you. Now, whether they have any legs to stand on in terms of suing them, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say um, it would just get tossed because the NFLPA agreed to the collective bargaining agreement. So you can't sue them for following the process that you agreed to. To me, if they're going to try to sue, it's going to be based on discrimination. How can you punish me for doing something that other people haven't been getting, haven't gotten punished for? You can say nobody else has had such and such amount of accusations against them. That's they focused on five, mm-hmm. so it's not thirty; it's five. So, um, and the NFL admitted that it was unprecedented. So, to me, that's the way I get it. What about you, John? What do you think? Oh, I just don't think they want a headache. So, just. Put that kind of that little thread out there hanging in the back of the NFL's mind that if they go for full suspension, it could potentially get sloppy. So I just don't think they want the headache. So I think it's kind of like that move that maybe they're not going to go for a full suspension just based on not wanting to deal with the aftermath. The NFL wants it to go away. There's That's no what question. I, yeah. That's where I'm at. They, the NFL does not want this to drag on. They're tired of turning on an ESPN and it's the t- leads the top of the hour every show. Um, it's the only thing you can read about on Twitter. I'm tired. The judge. What are we waiting on? I, I, I've heard that she wants to get it right. She's taking her time. She's going to write out her, uh, write out her reasonings and stuff like that, like judges do. But you're retired. It's not like you got a. <laughs> it's not like you got a full docket. You know what I mean? It's not like she she heard ten cases last week. Yeah. It's the only thing she's got going on. Like, how about block out an afternoon? Put your, you know, butt in the seat and write this thing out and get it to us by tomorrow. <laughs> she might have a family. I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, she's getting paid to her job. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what is, I don't understand what's taking so long 
with this kind of thing. I mean, she's a judge, and if you've ever dealt with anything in the judicial system, I mean, it takes <laughs> for forever. Ever. I mean, there's people on death row have been there for 15 years because they got three appeals, and it takes five years between every appeal. It's are you more worried that it's going to be a longer suspension because of how long it's taking, or are you the opposite? No, I, I don't. I'm just annoyed and anxious. I don't think it has any bearing in terms of what the suspension is going to be. Um, just clarity. Yes, I'm just tired of waiting. I, I feel like I spend way too much time on my phone because I'm constantly refreshing Twitter because I just want to know. Um, so I wish you, you know, crap or get off the pot. Yeah. Let's go. Um, I will say this. I, I've seen this reported a couple times that – if Watson is suspended for a full season or longer, I guess the Browns, which we've talked about this, eight games is kind of like that threshold of we can stay afloat or not stay afloat. So if it's longer than that, there's reports that Cam Newton could be an option. What do you guys think? Uh, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm with John. I uh, Maybe if it was 2016, absolutely. Absolutely bring him in. But um, to me – just from what I've seen the last few times that he has played, whether you know it was the Patriots um, and then Carolina last year, I just he's a shell of the guy that we remember. He's not Superman anymore, um, and it's unfortunate because he at one point he was one of the most exciting players to watch, you know, in the NFL and in college. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. With those Auburn games, he he was a straight stud. But um, yeah, so for me, I. I would say I know that this is going to be a backup J- Jacoby Brissett, but like too many injury risks. These guys kind of talked about it as we were getting started, but the the arms not there anymore, and then even then, like the legs aren't even really there anymore. Like they're it's just not the same guy. I mean, if you brought Cam Newton on this roster, excluding Deshaun, he'd probably be the third best quarterback on the roster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only whenever I saw the Cam Newton thing, the only thing I really thought of was. If, if they wanted to kind of use Brissett as like the between the 20s kind of guy, and then when they get down make inside the 10 or something, they bring in Cam Newton to kind of, you know, do what he did in New England where it's like, is he going to give it to Chubb? You got Hunt. Cam Newton can also bulldoze it into – you don't need him to rip off a 20-yard run to get in the end zone. But, I mean, New England, he sucked in New England, but he was very – they used him very well around the goal line. How many touchdown passes did he have that year? Wasn't it something it was crazy eight. low? He had eight. He played a full season in the NFL and only had eight, eight more touchdowns, touchdowns than not me. Yep, that season. <laughs> and he also threw ten <laughs> picks. But I'm saying around the around the end zone on the goal line, I think you'd have to he'd have to bring him in cheap though. Oh, oh for like sure, super cheap. Yeah, like, he's not getting top dollar like free. Uh, like, hey, we'll give you some swag. We got <laughs> we got this cool hat store up the street. You can <laughs> yeah. check it out. We'll give you a discount. Dogs podcast, you know, hoodie or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah cool. we'll send it in. Um, I. I I want nothing to do with that. Everything and really, really good about Cam Newton is from forever ago. You're completely <laughs> right. We, 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 have, we didn't see him break all these records last year, two seasons ago. It was a long, long time ago. 2016 right. was last. 28, so, 2018, he, he threw for, yeah, it wasn't all that great, but 3,400 yards, 24 touchdowns, 13 picks. Well, hey, you better be careful saying that's not that great. That's a career year for our old quarterback. And <laughs> oh no, am I, am I about to get hammered here? No, 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 no. Let me read a couple of names off to you guys. If they do have to go after some backups and see if any of these guys you're excited about, so backup. So not this would be in. Jacoby Brissett's back. I'm get. This is how okay. I'm seeing this as. Before you say this, if in your guys' opinion, if it's longer than eight games, should we be looking to sign a backup for Brissett, or do we need to be signing somebody better than Brissett? So, here's my thing. If it's if it's a full season, listen, we just saw Baker Mayfield go for a fifth, and we pretty much had to pay almost what it would have been half of the salary, correct? Basically. What do you think half. the 49ers market is for Jimmy G at $24.5 million a year? Bro, he's getting released. I'm saying wait till he gets released. If you really, if we really. How much, out, are, they on the, how much are they on the hook for, though? If they release him, I mean, it's. I, I can look it up. Look that quick. up. Because, so I, we were texting about this in the group before, and uh, Nick actually had a good point. There's a huge difference between Jimmy G in the locker room and Baker. The, the, the Niners can just keep Jimmy G and know he's not going to be a locker room problem. That's fair. Whether he starts or he uh, doesn't start. Did you guys see that? I just got the alert. On the way in here, though, that now he's got permission from the team to seek. Yeah. Yeah. 
But even if nobody trades for him, I think you can say Jimmy G would go back to the Niners and be the backup, and he might not be thrilled, but he wouldn't cause any problems. And, uh, so to me, they're, the Niners aren't in the situation where they would feel the need to pay any of his money. He's got a dead cap value of $13 million. So if they release him, they're still paying $13 million. So I don't know if they'd release him. They might just keep him. It's, no, I don't think it would take much to trade for him, though. I, mean, I think there's a higher value. I think there's a higher market for Jimmy G than there is for Baker. I agree, but it's not that not like a first rounder. No, like no, no. But I think there will be more suitors potentially. If, I think the teams that would come after Jimmy G are more teams like the Browns, teams that are like, hey, we just need a guy who can get us to the playoffs and get it. I mean, Jimmy G's gone, been to the Super Bowl. He's the the NFC Giants. Championship last year. What's I've that? heard Giants too. I've heard yeah. the Giants. Are you so? This is. Are you guys comfortable with us paying twenty four and a half million dollars for Jimmy G? I like I here, that's the thing is, if it's because I'm comfortable with Jacoby Brissett if it's four to six because I'm like so for me anything over six I'm like I think that the window on a, a potential playoff push could be closed, and I and I maybe I'm off off point there. I just don't see this guy being a, able to carry us an entire season, and then there's still what our aspiration should be as fans that we have a chance to win the Super Bowl. So we talked about this on the way up is I think if J- if Jacoby Brissett has to play the whole year, we'll just look a lot like we looked like last year. Yeah, just average. Mm-hmm. It'll be yeah. – it will struggle to be – you know, we'll be in close games with tough teams, but we'll lose, and we will be – we'll struggle to beat some bad teams, but we'll win, and we'll finish somewhere around 500. So I think you can – I think Deshaun can miss eight games. It's it's more sus, <laughs> well, like what the kids sus. Are, are saying. <laughs> um, but I think he can miss eight, and Jacoby can get us to four and four, and then it's on to Sean, and it, you know then he's got to play well, and it's still going to be an uphill battle. Correct. But it's not done. I think anything more than eight, if we don't bring in somebody better than Brissett, you, I think you're basically calling the season a wash. There's I'm, nobody better than Brissett uh, in free agency oh, that the, you can just call. You know, the list bring is in. bad. It's the real list bad. Is bad. It's, Fitzpatrick, Newton, and He's retired. He's, Mike not, he's doing so, Thursday night football halftime show. <laughs> if you got to bring in somebody better than Brissett, it's got to be off another team, yep. another roster. So it's Cam Newton, Mike Glennon, who These we saw. He's the backups now, right? So for, did, for this a backup. Will, uh, this is how I interpret it as backups to Jacoby Brissett. Okay. Mike yeah. Glennon. So starter after injuries and stuff like that, you know, come in here and there. Uh, A.J. McCarron, not impressed. Uh, Garrett Gilbert played for the Browns. You know, he was on the Browns roster. What? How long ago was that? Maybe wasn't it like three, two, or three two years? Yeah, ago, three, right? yeah, yeah. So the, you know, familiar name, but different situation three years ago with the Browns, and then Josh Rosen, and then after that, it's some guys that I literally I haven't heard of anybody except for Derek King. Isn't he going to play in like the Canadian Football League or something like that? Yeah, or? but. Uh, my my lord, is that that's what we want? Just think, I know this is theoretically like if Jacoby Brissett is to get injured or somebody else has to come in, is that what we're banking on? That that's so. Let me throw out just another name real quick uh, at just a little over three million dollars. Would you trade for a backup for Brissett for Nick Foles? I have one too. That uh, so for Nick Foles, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. And this one, I think Blake will like this one, but. What about Minshew? If we can trade for him at two million a year, honestly, two million a year so for two Minshew. Two million a I'd year. I'd roll the dice on Call that. Call me crazy if we traded for Minshew. I think he'd start over Brissett. Over Brissett. I think I agree. I actually, there'd be a chance for that. <laughs> yeah. It depends on how far into the season he comes. You know what I mean? Like we'd, I think we'd be easily the most talented team he's ever played with. Yeah, oh, I, agree I, with I, that. I like that name thrown out there. I've Throw seen that Minshew name kind of. Yeah, but uh, we'd have to trade. And I, but that's the thing. Like, what's the trade value for a backup quarterback? And I think if you're going to do it, do it now. But that's where we're in trouble is because we don't know if we need to even – like it's almost like we're at the sword. We don't know if we need to make a decision. We need Sue Robinson to crap or get off the pot. Well, we yep. they said too, like, hey, you know, for the most part, NFL Watson's camp wants this wrapped up before training camp. And they're saying now there's a lot of reports that this is potentially going to go into training camp as – you know, we're not sure what's going on situation, which to me, I'm like, okay, so next week it should, by the end of the week, next week, we should know something. Hopefully that we thought that for weeks though, like, you know, all July 11th, you know, there's, we should have some idea of where this direction is going as far as the suspension. And I'm hearing different stuff, two to eight games, you know, 
like to me, I'm like two day games. Well, hey, we'll just we're gonna roll with Brissett. But um, no. <laughs> and as far as backups for Brissett, based on this list you just read me, is Josh Dobbs worse than any of these guys? I just roll I mean, with Dobbs as the backup. We don't really know. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Like none of those guys are. There's no way any of those guys are leaps and bounds better than him. Uh, the as far as though, like if Deshaun's out of season. I like the Gardner Minshew thing. I've always been a Gardner Minshew. I know fan. you have, bro. I <laughs> so, know you have. I did um, that for you. And I think, I think he could give Brissett a run for his money in terms of who'd start. Like no lie. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see the reports about the Browns are uh, the leaked uh, suspension or whatever? They're they're saying eight games is, Gee, is what they're the Browns bracing. Are. They're bracing. They're quietly for bracing for eight games. Which to me, I'm like, hey, if so. I don't I know think this anybody sucks. knows anything. No, I don't either. I think they're saying, hey, we're quietly bracing for eight. But I think if they came out and they said, hey, the NFL, Deshaun Watson, Sue Robinson, we're all agreeing on eight games, I think Browns fans would go, okay, eight games. Hey, Deshaun Watson's going to play this season. There's chance. I've literally sat and talked to people and we're like, one and eight, and we're like, well, we got to win the next six, and uh, you know, Steelers got to lose out, and Baltimore's got to <laughs> lose out, and and we're then there's still hope for the playoffs. I uh, like, and that's how I feel like if it's eight games, we're we're gonna be like that the entire season. Like, oh, we're gonna bank on some of these teams having to lose to stay competitive. At if it's end. if it's eight or less, I can't wait to watch all these people in our comments and our mentions just eating so much crow. Yeah. You know. How, Thousands and thousands of people have told me he's not playing this year. Ever He'll be again. lucky to play next year. He's never playing again. Yeah. Not He'll he never shouldn't play for the Browns. Not he shouldn't. That he won't. Yeah, there, there can he'll be suspended for the next thirty eight years. <laughs> so I, I can't <laughs> wait to watch him play this year yeah. and watch all these people have to eat crow. Um, but no, I like some of those names. I don't like any of those free agents. No, nope. I don't either. No, I, don't like I, any I read that article and I just went, oh, man. And then people are like getting behind like the Cam Newton thing, too. And they're like, man, I'd be excited to see Cam Newton in, with that roster. And no. I'm like, that's not the problem isn't the roster. The problem's Cam Newton. The problem is and Cam it, Newton. It and sucks to say that, is, too, because yes, I was you. a huge Cam Newton fan yeah. back in the day. Yep. But, man, he is a shell of himself. Yes. He's not good at all anymore. No, he's, no. He's no. awful. So. Um, we need Sue Robinson to hurry up. Hopefully, this is cleared up before we go up to camp next weekend. I hope so. so very exciting. Yeah, uh, I can't excited. wait for that. Yeah, if but, you're at training camp on July 30th, uh, come and look for us. We'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be hanging out. Come and say, the stands with you guys. Come <laughs> say hello to the dogs. Um, <laughs> okay, so that was the like kind of the Watson news this week and what we think the Browns should do. I, as far as Jimmy G's is concerned, I just don't think unless the Niners are willing to pay a bunch of that money, I just don't think the Browns can do it. I mean, the, maybe if it's a full season, they can try to figure out how to pull some strings, but I just don't see how that's workable. Um, but I would take it if they could figure it out. What's going on, Browns fans? The action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook, especially this summer. With tons of ways to bet on all your favorite sports, you can fuel your fandom and feel the heat of the season like never before. Plus, right now, DraftKings Sportbook is giving new customers a risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's a lot of dough. That's right. Make your first bet up to $1,000, and if it doesn't win, you'll get another shot to cash in. You can throw down on all the uh, major action on baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options never feel endless. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TPPN. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code TPPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Look forward to betting with you soon and minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. God bless. Um, so the next thing we want to get into, we touched on the running back rankings last year or last week that the uh, – ESPN put out with the executive and the scout rankings. So now today we want to take a little peek at the running back and wide receiver rankings. Um, you mean quarterback? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I read the wrong thing. Quarterback and wide receiver rankings. My my show outline was wrong. I'm 
I'm a silly goose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do quarterbacks first here real quick. The top 10, Aaron Rodgers at one, Mahomes at two, Josh Allen at three, Tom Brady at four, Joe Burrow at five, Matthew Stafford at six, Justin Herbert at seven, um, Russell Wilson at eight, Deshaun Watson at nine, and Dak Prescott at 10. Well, I already know where you're going <laughs> to. So I have a couple, I have a couple things here. Yep. Um, what it, do you guys think Rogers at one is okay? Yes. Yep. But I don't think it's going to show this year with his wide receiver room. Uh, it depends. Like, cause I, like when I look at this, I go, who's a guy that I, that I trust that the number one guy, if I can have any quarterback go out there and win me a game and in the regular season, it's for sure. Rogers. But then like, you know, like, I guess like if it's the playoffs, do you want Tom Brady? Um, I'm a big fan of Josh Allen. I'm a big fan of Patrick Mahomes. Like, look what, and then look at some of the names behind that. Like, look what Matt Stafford did just with a good roster. So, don't get me wrong, Aaron Rodgers, stud. And I don't think, I mean, he's back-to-back MVP. You can't really argue that that's not a good pick, you know, right there at one, but... I think when it comes to those top four guys, I mean, the two young guys, the two vets... I think you could rearrange those in any order, yeah. and you're not going to be wrong. You could put Mahomes first. You could put Allen, Brady, Tom Rogers. Brady. It doesn't first, matter. Yeah. I mean, but you got to put a you know you have to put somebody at one, somebody at two, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So I'm good with the quarterback top ten. Didn't really bug me too much. Uh, we'll get there. So to me, it's it's tough not to have Rodgers at one when he's back to back MVP. Yeah, right. Um, and it's tough not to say he's not still the best because. I mean, he, he makes every throw still. Yeah. Um, and then Mahomes and Allen. Allen could maybe be better than Mahomes, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's so close. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I guess it depends. We Maybe we'll see this year if one of them takes a leap. Tom Brady at fourth. I mean, it's crazy. I'm a little <laughs> – I'm not crazy because I don't think he's he good. Should it's be just one. crazy that he's – Is that what you're 40, saying? 45. No, oh. and 50 years old. Oh, bro. He's, he's think, still in the top ten. I think he has an argument to be number one if it's based on his career. And it's – well, I think well, it's, it's for – Well, he led the league last year and he's yeah. number one for yeah. sure. I think it's for this year, but he led the league in passing every year since he went to the Bucks. I'm pretty sure, in yards at least. Mm-hmm. Um, Touchdowns too last year. Yep. I'm a little. I think it's a little weird to have Burrow and Stafford ranked this way when Stafford just outdoled Dirt Burrow in the Super Bowl. And Stafford has his career is good. I mean, yeah, he has been a very. It wasn't great his fault. <laughs> it wasn't his fault in Detroit. He, no. he threw 17. I guess you could say he threw 17 picks last year, but he threw 50 touchdowns. He was in a new system, brand new team. I mean, so you're going to see quarterbacks throw more picks when they first get in that new team. The only argument I could say for that is for Joe Burrow. I'm like maybe it's the upside. Because this dude is super young and is already he's already given you success immediately. So I'll say this. Do you think Deshaun at nine is right? Is it based off his career? Is it based off what he did last year? <laughs> well, <it's funny. laughs> I, that's where like I look at these. We kind of touched on it the last episode, and I was like, if this is based on last year, and it, this is crazy to say because the last time we saw Deshaun Watson, he was a top five quarterback. Yes. So like to me, it's like, Absolutely, he should be in the top 10. But if this is based on last year, no. I mean, he should be out. I think it's a little recency bias on whoever's putting these yeah. together, too. Because I think it's based on, like, if they play every game, what are we going to see? Yeah, I think yeah. it's, like, how good they are going to be this year. Yeah. yeah, and don't get me wrong. Like, Joe Burrow, like you said, awesome player. But yeah. I do think the last time we saw Deshaun Watson play, I mean, we, it's so easy to forget how great he oh, is. Oh, dude, top five, easy. Yeah, I would have Deshaun at five. And then Burrow, and then you could put Burrow at six, Stafford at seven, Herbert at eight. Um, to me, the I mean, Dak Prescott at ten is like the most laughable thing I've ever I knew seen. It. I yeah, knew it. that is the most laughable thing I've ever seen in my life. He is not the tenth best quarterback. It's not. I mean, that is insane. To not, I mean, to not have Lamar at ten over Dak is crazy. It's it's, it's, it's absolutely. So crazy. who's number ten, Lamar or Derek Carr? To me, uh, Derek Carr. <laughs> I think Your other it, boy. I, I think it is great. And we we have a reputation on the show for talking about how Lamar is a really is, good running back. Correct. <laughs> Here's the thing is he's so, so – he completely changes – your defensive game plan. Like you can't game plan for Lamar Jackson. You really can't. Until it comes to the playoffs. But <laughs> that's different. But um, no, like I'm okay 
with Lamar at 10 if Dak is out. I And, I, you know, like I've argued that in the past. I, I'm okay with that because I think based on what talent was around both guys, Lamar did more with less. Here, and here's the thing is the in this article it's quoted a good but not great QB. For, how's it then? How for, are we putting him at ten for Dak? For Dak, it, it, it's just I mean, listen, I make fun of Lamar for being a running back, blah blah blah, all that stuff too, because I'm a Browns fan. At the end of the day, the mm-hmm. dude is an MVP, thirty-seven and twelve record as a starter, um, and I mean he's won like eighty percent of his games, Dak. Him and Dak is in terms of wins and stuff. I mean, he's won more games. The only thing Dak does is throw for more yards. Well, Lamar runs for more yards. And their playoff rate, uh, we looked it up. I thought it was exactly the same, right? One and three. Something They're like both that. one and three. Yeah. So I just, I mean, to me, that is, it is crazy. If you get, if you have the same roster and you can choose a quarterback between those two, I'm definitely taking Lamar. 100%. Without a doubt. 100%. He's so dangerous. To me, Dak would be, Dak should be. T- 12, 13, something like that. They were talking about it on uh, one of the ESPN shows, and they said they weren't even – I want to say it was Bart Scott that said he said wasn't even a top 15 quarterback in the league. And I was like, whoa, mm. whoa. Yeah. Yikes. Let's look – well, let's look up the 32 starting quarterbacks real quick. Oh. Let's get let's get let's, let's get crazy. Let's do that. Let's see what Bart. Let's see if Bart Scott's onto something. Let's hurry up. Bart Scott actually he has some crazy hot takes. Uh, I well, to we got to put some time. people at the at the bottom real quick so we can go. What um, Daniel Jones at thirty two? Daniel Jones isn't the worst. Who's the worst? Sam Darnold. I still think Baker's the starter there, but uh, but uh, <laughs> let me see. So let me pull up NFL starting quarterbacks. I guess I could have just pulled up all the teams. Yeah. I think easy. Dak's got to be top 13. I can't – well, I'll look it up, but I can't think of too many names that I put over him that aren't in the top 10. So I'm taking Lamar. Carl, Lamar, and uh, – Let's hear – here, I got all of them. I'm taking Lamar. I'm taking Josh Allen. I'm taking Joe Burrow. I'm taking Deshaun Watson. I'm taking Russell Wilson. Um, And then I'm taking Pat Mahomes, Derek Carr, Justin Herbert. Then I'm taking – Okay, are you taking Trubisky or Dak? Dak. I think I'm okay. taking Dak. All right, this is great radio. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you showtime? Are, right are you taking yeah. Are you taking Tannehill or are you taking Dak? Dak. Okay. I like Tannehill though. Kyler or Dak? Dak. I'm taking Kyler. Um, and I don't even like Kyler that much. I'm taking Kyler. Uh, are you taking Baker? Or are you taking Dak? Dak. 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 Okay. You taking Justin Fields or Dak? Dak. Golf or Dak? Dak. Rogers. <laughs> Why'd you even ask that? Uh, Matthew Stafford. So there we're at to eleven. Uh, Kirk Cousins. I would take Dak. Mm. I think they're like super similar. Um, that, that one is that one is kind of tough. That one's super. There. I mean, Kirk Cousins is like crazy. I mean, Dak wins more. But the stats wise, they're. I mean, they're very similar. I feel like in mm-hmm. terms of completion percentage, Dak gets a ton of yards. Um, and Kirk Cousins got to play on a good team too. So that one's close. Um, Jameis Winston, probably Dak. That was Dak. the one that they said. Jameis, he said Jameis Winston would be over Dak Prescott. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's like, look at the receivers he's going to throw to. And he was five and two last year before he got hurt. I mean, I this like, is true. You, that's another thing. It's so tough to evaluate some of these people because Dak has played with an embarrassment of riches his entire career. He got to play with prime Zeke. And then when Zeke got out of his prime, Tony Pollard's pretty good. He got to play with um, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. Lamb, Lamb Gallup. Yep. Gallup. Schultz. Yeah. I mean, he's playing with well, – you take Jimmy G, you take Dak. Dak. Yeah, I take Dak. What about uh, Jalen Hurts? Oh, Dak. Yeah. I think it's – We'll see I'd this like year. See, yeah. We'll what see about, this what year. About Matt Ryan? <laughs> uh, yeah, I skipped him I earlier. going to throw that Matt name Ryan. out there. I would still take Dak over I would Matt too. Ryan right I now. I would too. For sure. Who would you take? Probably Dak. It's close. It's close. Dak's younger. I think that's his biggest edge. Tom Brady. <laughs> Shut up. Tom. <laughs> Keep going. Carson Wentz. Oh, Dak. Dak Probably yeah. Dak, yeah. Okay, so based on that, Dak's it like he's fringe 15. So maybe Bart Scott's not that crazy. Um, I just think, I don't know. Dak has got to play with a lot, a lot. 
of really good players. Yeah, but you can't penalize a guy for his team. I mean, then you'd have to look at Joe Burrow and say, well, he's got T. Higgins and Jamar no, Chase but Joe and Hart, Tyler Boyd. You're and right. All these guys. Joe Burrow went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And was one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Can I backtrack, huh. even though we're not <laughs> supposed to talk about this today? I'm actually really excited to see Winston this year. Uh, I'm not sold on the roster entirely, but I like his receivers. And he's oh, thrown for 5,000 uh, before. You can sell me on the roster. The roster is – I think they're they're still very good on defense, and then their offense is, ha, is could be very good. I think if Winston is rebounding from that injury yep. okay, I think he could surprise people so, this year. Before I thought Watson was on the table, I texted Blake and said, let's trade for Amari, draft Chris Olave, and see if we can sign Winston. We and, talked about Jameis yeah. Winston back mm-hmm. before oh, we yeah. had Deshaun Watson, yeah. A lot of people hated us for it. <laughs> Hate away, baby. So let us know what you guys stats. think. Ravens fans, I expect a little love from you guys for sticking up for your boy. No, um, don't count on it. <laughs> uh, I, to me, it's just it's insane that he's not – that they have Dak on here over him. That's crazy, in my opinion. Um, I mean, the guy was MVP two years ago. So now we will – any other people you want on there? The Derek Carr thing was a good one. Um, I think he could be at 10. I think him or Lamar at 10 would be – Good. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Browns fans, you've heard us talking about Omaha Steaks for a while now, and they are seriously the best steaks that we have ever had. Summer is here, and no backyard grill out is complete without Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter dogs, D A W G S, into the search bar. You're going to get a special price on the All American assortment, and as a tasty bonus, you've been hearing us talk about the eight free ultra juicy Omaha steak burgers that you get when you place your order. Well, now they're changing the deal and you now get 12 of those babies. So you get 12 free Omaha steak burgers with your order. When you go to omahasteaks.com, enter dogs into the search bar, order the all American assortment. You get 16 mouthwatering entrees, four famously fork tender, double trim, butcher's cut filet mignons, four pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts. Is anybody else here getting hungry? Plus, so much more. There's a reason why Omaha Steaks has been the leader of gourmet steaks since 1917. No one, and I mean no one, comes close to matching the flavor, tenderness, and the value of Omaha Steaks. So go now, order the All-American Assortment, fill your freezer with enough gourmet food to keep your cookouts going strong all summer long. And don't forget, for a limited time, our listeners get 12 free Omaha Steak Burgers when they order the All-American Assortment. So hurry up, visit omahasteaks.com, type in keyword dogs, D-A-W-G-S, into the search bar. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword dogs. Um, so then we will go to wide receivers. And this list is okay, I think, for the most part. It's the, when we get into these Madden rankings here. So, Devontae at one, Cooper Cup at two, Jamar Chase at three, Justin Jefferson at four, Tyree Kill at five, Stephon Diggs at six, DeAndre Hopkins at seven, Mike Evans at eight, Debo Samuel at nine, and DK Metcalf at ten. So, to me, that's pretty. That's a pretty solid list. Why don't we just kind of merge this with the Madden wide receiver rankings now? Um, to me... Let's compare this to Madden. Here's your Madden top 10. I think it's insane. Devontae, Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins, Stephon Diggs, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans. To me, this is where it gets shady. Terry McLaurin at 8, Keenan Allen at 9, Amari Cooper at 10. I love that we have Amari Cooper on the Browns. He's not 10. That is that is crazy. Um, and then if we look at 11 through 20, this is where it gets even more crazy. Um they have – notice I didn't say Jamar Chase in that top 10 in the uh, Madden rank, <laughs> rankings, okay? Um, I got to find my list again. Here we go. Tyler Lockett at 11, Michael Thomas, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, Chris Godwin, DJ Moore, Adam Thielen, Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, Brandon Cooks. Adam Thielen and DJ Moore are 88. Jamar Chase is at an 87. A.J. Brown's at an 87, and Brandon Cooks is an 87. You mean to tell me Jamar Chase is the same as Brandon Cooks? I'm going to uh, bat for a lot of AFC rivals today. So so here's my thing. <laughs> the only name of, like that you could throw in there with Jamar Chase and to move up to that, what, was that eighth? Or who, who was at eight Mike uh, or seven? So Mike Evans at seven, and then where it's like Terry McLaurin, Keenan Allen. I think Jamar Chase has to be – mid top 10 at least right off the bat and then where's Debo Samuel at like yeah where's Debo Samuel at um I like Terry McLaurin he's he's very good Ohio State kid he's awesome but he's not number eight to put him above you know 
Jamar Chase, and then we. I mean, uh, the executives had Jamar Chase at what I say three, which is that's and 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 Madden has him at eighteen. He's not even in the nineties. He had he was third in the NFL in receiving touchdowns last year and fourth in the league in yards. He was a huge reason they went to the Super Bowl. It was a pretty impressive rookie season. <laughs> yeah, yep. and they have him at eighteen. I, I I don't understand what they're looking at here. I like Chris Godwin a lot. I like Tyler Lockett. How's Tyler Lockett a ninety and Jamar Chase is an eighty-seven? And I don't mean that to like bash Tyler Lockett, but I mean, come on. Yeah, he's he's not the same player. Another as guy, Jamar Chase. Another guy you brought up too. Um, AJ Brown. No AJ Brown. Nowhere to be seen. He's at 19. Oh, too low. On which list? On the Madden list. Too low. At, at what rate at what rating? Um in 87. So apparently according to well, Madden. 87, but that's crazy that there's that many guys ahead of him. Uh, yeah. uh, according to Madden, Jamar Chase, AG Brown, and Brandon Cooks are all the same. Yeah, and that's Brandon the thing. Cooks. I guess you can't really say that he's the nineteenth ranked and go by that when a lot of the guys have the same rating. Which would make them tied for whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but I don't like the Michael Tom as much as another Ohio State guy, I don't <laughs> like Michael Thomas at what was he at? Eleven? Twelve. Twelve? Prove it to me, bro. Yeah. Prove That's it to me. Bad. I know you gotta have a, a good ranking and stuff, but you haven't done anything. You've been a zero for the last two years. The craziest thing on that list is Jamar Chase. To me. I agree. I oh, agree for sure. Uh, I don't He's top five. I agree. Uh, and you know who else agrees? I think it was uh, Greg Newsom for the Browns. Somebody like ESPN posted something like Jamar Chase is a top what receiver, and J- Greg Newsom said five. Yeah, that's fair. And Joe or uh, um, Denzel Ward said until they play me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I just don't know how Madden came up with these, and I don't. I guess I don't know what the criteria. Madden ratings are always. Kind of bizarre, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the, remember so, we did the quarterbacks. Yeah, it so was the, like uh, the edge rushers. They got Miles is the Browns' first ever ninety nine overall player, mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool. But a lot of people are complaining because he's ahead of TJ yeah. Watt. They said TJ Watt's a ninety six, and they said, "Well, if Miles Garrett's a ninety nine, TJ Watt's a one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Which here is the thing: I've looked at the stats side by side. We all have, and we've posted them up. You can't argue that. Like, it's... So, we talked about this some yesterday, too. I think Miles Garrett is arguably the most physically gifted player, like, at any position in the league, outside of maybe Aaron Donald. Um, And then maybe, like, a guy like DK Metcalf, who's a freak at receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just don't think he has the motor. I think if you put TJ Watt's motor on Miles Garrett, he'd be an all-timer. Hall of Fame. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we talked about that a lot, that the motor's just not there. T.J. Watt is running at all all cylinders go every play. Yeah, because I was talking to a guy from the Patreon yesterday, and he's like, you know, Miles has the better pass rush win rate. Blah, you know, And he was like, well, why would you take T.J. over Miles? And I was like, because he, I feel like he impacts the game in every play every time I watch. I never watch a Steelers game and not notice T.J. Watt. I watch every Browns game, and there are stretches of time, not just plays, sometimes games, where you don't even realize that Miles Garrett's on the field. You forget him. You, you forget, forget that he's on the team. Yes. It's and like, that, oh, that's right, Miles Garrett. Where, is he out there? And he's a 99 overall. He's supposed to be an impact player. And I'm not saying that Miles isn't really, really freaking good. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite Browns players. I just don't think – in. He has like that it like that push. TJ will get triple teamed every time in a row, and every time though he's punching his way through, fighting tooth. It's like Miles gets triple teamed a few times in a row, and he's like, "Oh, this kind of sucks." I'd I, I'd like to just see Miles Garrett put together a full a, season, a full season. Yeah, uh, there there are sprints where I'm like, "Wow, that's the most that's one of the most crazy things I've ever seen." Like somebody do athletically. And then there's, like you said, there's times, and it, it feels like the second half of the season he just disappears. And it's, I know there was COVID and, you know, all that stuff. But, like, there's times where we but need there, a big play. <laughs> oh, hey, man, wake up. Time for work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I would just like to see, I think the word I want to say is consistency. Oh, for sure, man. Just consistency. And the thing with T.J. Watt is I feel like he affects more 
like he's not just a pass rush like specialist. You see him getting after the running backs too. Like he'll yeah. he'll dominate in he's the everywhere. run game. He's now, the guy will be going on the outside, you know, running outside on the other end of the line, and he's right there. In in fairness, he's an outside linebacker. Miles is a defensive end, so that's why you know he, he gets to play in coverage more and that kind of stuff. But he to me, he just impacts every play more than Miles. Like we said, you shouldn't go games at a time without even realizing miles garrett's on the field Mm-mm. and that was the knock on him coming out of college we read this like a couple months ago it was he, he doesn't seem to have that high motor he's just so much physically better than everybody that he doesn't have that a hundred percent i'm gonna murder you every play mentality mm-hmm. he's thinking yep. about poetry or whatever and <laughs> was it dinosaurs yeah that? i'm hey, i'm with him on the dinosaurs. maybe he's just <laughs> bummed out about dominion <laughs> yeah. so are we all um, no spoilers. So the those blade. were the uh, the Madden rankings. I think the receiver rankings are absolutely insan- insane. I think the executive rankings were pretty fair. Um, not, I mean, I Amari it was Cooper. Mix. It was nice seeing him top ten in Madden, but I think it's completely wrong. I think the executives had it right. I don't. I think Amari Cooper is very good receiver. I don't think he's a top ten wide receiver. What about you? Do you guys think that? No, I don't think he's top ten. I, think I agree with exactly fair. what you just said. It's it is tough, and I I don't have the list in front of me to remember who's all on there. But I mean, Amari Cooper is a very good receiver, mm-hmm. and it's just I feel like consistency might be his thing too. Like I'd love to see just a full season of Amari Cooper just dominance. He's, he's had some stellar stellar seasons, and then there's just been a couple lulls here and there. I feel like he's had he's almost been like Miles though, where he'll put together great stretches, but it's never complete. Like every. Almost every game of the season, you're like, oh, Mark Cooper was out. You know, like, just, just some of the top guys, Yeah, every single week, they're doing something. So the uh, honorable mentions for the executives, real quick, was Keenan Allen, A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin, Chris Godwin, Michael Thomas, C.D. Lamb, Mike Williams. Why Mike? I don't, I don't, I don't understand the obsession with Michael Thomas. He, he hasn't been anything since Drew Brees, no, what, don't, three years ago? So he's been out for two years now. Don't get me wrong. When he went out, he was – what one or two? He's As, crazy. He was winning Thomas a lot of fo- uh, fantasy games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> had a boy. Um, yeah. and then he took him to overall, and overall, and he didn't play a game. I don't think, or maybe one. But I was just interested to see if um, Cooper was an honorable mention. He's not even an honorable mention on here. So the executives don't even have him. In the top is 15. a top fifteen. Which is there anybody on this list that you should think should kick off and put Amari Cooper on? Probably nobody in the top ten. Would you take Amari or Keenan Allen? <sighs> they both do the same That's kind of stuff really well, route running, you know? I'd probably take Keenan Allen. <laughs> um, what about A.J. Brown? Uh, man. As long as he's healthy, I'm probably taking A.J. Brown. Terry McLaurin. Hmm. I think that's kind of a... I would probably take Amari Cooper. Yeah, I'd probably take Cooper. McLaurin's ascending, though. Yes, I agree with that. Chris Godwin. Because of what we need, I'd probably take Cooper. Chris yeah. Godwin, you know, okay. Um, Michael Thomas, we just talked about. It. Here's the the one for me is C.D. Lamb. I think he could potentially be great, but they were just on the same team together. And Amari he was Cooper the number was, two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Mike Williams or Amari Cooper. I would take Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. I agree. Mike Williams Mike, does one thing really well. He uh, He's very good, but he and can't he stay hurt. on the field. Right. Yeah. So... I guess you could say Amari's probably, you know, fringe 13 to 15, somewhere in there, which to me would be a fair ranking for him. Yeah, so, that's fair. And probably the best receiver. I mean, except for Jarvis, but probably the most explosive receiver as far as downfield threat is concerned that we've had since Braylon Edwards. <laughs> that one year. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on before we get out of here, I've been seeing some of this on Twitter, and Justin brought it up. There's Whoa. this debate going on. Of what fan base is better, the Bengals or the Browns? I defended Jamar Chase a lot. I'm about to crap all over the Bengals right now. On what <laughs> basis do the Bengals so, have to say that they're better than the Browns? So on Around the Horn during a commercial break, two of the, I don't know if you guys ever watch Around the Horn. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, it's awesome. So they got basically four guys, and they just debate all the stuff they eliminated, blah, blah, blah. So – they got into an argument about what was the best fan base in Ohio, whether it was the Bengals or the Browns. And the one guy basically said, you know, the Bengals are an ascending team. Their fan base are super loyal, blah, blah, blah. 
said Browns fans, the only people that care about the Browns are the people in the stadium. And uh, it's crazy because it's like they couldn't even sell out a playoff game last year. We were selling out 0-16 yeah. <laughs> up until like the last couple of games where people were like, this team is absolutely atrocious. Who, who said that? Who said that uh, you know, the only people who will, care about the Browns are in the I will stadium? Pull, I will find that. You guys talk about that's it. That's a ridiculous and I will pull it up. For, I mean, that's... The Browns travel kind of disrespectful. That's 100% <laughs> untrue. The Browns travel almost as well as anybody. Well, we have Browns backers clubs literally in London. Yeah, everywhere around the world. Yeah. We have people on our Patreon from Scotland. Yeah. And we're I mean, we're literally nothing special. We're just the Dogs podcast in this <laughs> little ass studio. And we have people from Scotland. That's how devoted Browns fans are, you know. And like he Justin said, we sell out games in the crap weather. You up until they drafted Burrow, you f- half the time you forget about the Bengals. Even when they were mm-hmm. relevant for a couple of years with Palmer, you don't even remember that they're in Ohio. I yeah. don't know in, one in single Cincinnati. Yes, I don't remember. I don't know one single Bengals fan. I know one Bengals fan, and then I, I all of a sudden saw about thirty of them when they made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> all of a sudden, there was a lot of Bengals hats around. So the person that said it was Clinton Yates. Oh my, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> okay, he's one hundred percent an idiot. Yeah, go ahead. You can continue to. Uh, like I said, well, I know Ravens fans personally. Stuff. I know a, a crap ton of Steelers fans. Obviously, I know Browns fans. I don't know one Bengals fan personally that I can say, "Oh yeah, that guy's a Bengals fan." They they almost. The only people that care about the Cincinnati Bengals is like the little southwest corner of Ohio. And like Cincinnati. the parents of the players and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The band kids' parents that come. Like Well, to so, be fair, there was quite a few I ran into a lot of Bengals fans in Columbus when I was down there. Okay. It was because it's right in the middle of Ohio. So it was kind of split. And then of course you'd get like the Steelers fans I'm like, where are you guys coming from? But Well, I was gonna throw this out there. I spent three years in South Carolina recently. And I met so many Browns fans. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of Steelers fans, and obviously Cowboys, Patriots, um, Eagles, Ravens. I didn't meet a single Bengals fan, <laughs> not one. <laughs> no, so. but you're in South Carolina. <laughs> but like I'm saying, I, I yeah, met it's not, yeah. I met teams from or yeah. fans of teams from every corner of the country, but Correct. no no Bengals fans. <laughs> so this is the direct quote from him. He said they were talking about the white helmets, which. They're, those uniforms are pretty sweet. Yeah, oh, those, the Bengals those have sick damn, unis. They're, they're dope. Oh, yeah, I do but, like their unis. But he said, you got to drop these helmets. You know, these things would sell out immediately. He said, that's one of the most rabid fan bases in terms of, like, soaking everything up. And Tony Reale was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Which Tony Reale don't uh, – I got to change the word I was going to use. He don't mess around. I was going to say, you know, bull ass. <laughs> but um, – and then they basically said, hey, you know, Yates said, are you familiar with the fan base, you know, and then basically said Browns fans are apathetic. Only people that care about Browns football are in the stadium. I've literally seen tr- – last year there was a waiting list to get training camp tickets. If it you was, don't get them right going. away, you can't It was hard to get training camp tickets last year. Was yeah. it, though? <laughs> well, not if you have a connection. That's right. Uh, That's right, baby. And our connection isn't somebody cool. It's literally just Justin. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So uh, somewhat cool. Yeah. Um, that, but that's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, for sure. It's awful. I mean, that is that is terrible. And I'm not, if you are a Bengals fan, I'm not trying to say like that you guys aren't passionate. I'm just trying to say there's way less of you. <laughs> way, way, way less. It is, if the, if the Cincinnati Bengals win a Super Bowl, most of Ohio will continue living their lives. If the Browns win a Super Bowl, you will have to shut three-fourths of this state down. Oh, yeah. For sure. It, it, Cleveland will burn. <laughs> well, and, the, and like you said, Justin, like we were selling out when the team was awful. We went through how many years of just but We were selling out the 0-16 season. And the fam- and you would talk to a Browns fan. They'd say, oh, I'll never stop being a Browns fan. Well, according to Clinton Yates, those are the only fans in the state. Or, in in per- the <laughs> <laughs> or you know, Tony Reale even put out a poll and it said, is it embarrassing that I've never met a Bengals fan? <laughs> 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 Tony Reale is a straight savage. I, I really like that guy a lot, but um, unreal. That's that's a terrible take. Clinton Yates should be fired for that. Um, but, okay, so we'll see if Bengals fans are in our comments complaining, but I'm sorry. It's just probably isn't any. Yeah. <laughs> They that, don't exist. That'll be very telling. Yeah. We'll have Ravens fans complaining about before we get Bengals fans. <laughs> yeah. And Colts fans. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. For, by the way, I forgot Chargers about fans. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But, 
Well, thanks for checking out another episode of The Dogs. Remember to sign up for The Dog Pack by the end of July at jointhedogs.com if you want to play fantasy with us this year. Um, we're going to set the league, the fantasy leagues up at the beginning of August, probably have the drafts at the end of August. So you got about 11 more days to jump in there. Um, plus, it's just a ton of fun hanging out with everybody. Uh, to all you Dog Pack members, we'll see you on the After Hours Show. And to everybody else, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast and become an official Dog Pack member and join the dogs.com. Dogs.